Hello friends, let us see the first topic of the RCC that is materials for RCC and design philosophies. So first if you take RCC, what do you mean by RCC? So RCC refers to reinforced cement concrete. Okay, RCC refers to what? Reinforced cement concrete. And what do you mean by reinforcing? So reinforcing means basically strengthening. Okay, reinforcing means what? Strengthening. So if you take the cement concrete and if you strengthen that cement concrete with some material, then the cement concrete obtained is called as a reinforced cement concrete. So what do you mean by reinforced? Reinforced means strengthening. Okay. Now basically, why we have to use RCC? Okay, so what is the material we are using for reinforcing here? So whatever the material we are using for reinforcing is a steel. That means to strengthen the cement concrete, we are using the steel here. So now if you see why we have to use RCC, if you take the PCC, plain cement concrete. Okay, what do you mean by PCC? Plain cement concrete. So this plain cement concrete, it is a strong in compression plain cement concrete is strong in compression and weak in tension okay it is very weak in tension but if you take many structures okay if you take various structures and in the structures because of the flexor action tensile stresses are developed now if you place only the steel in the tensile zone okay if you place only the steel sorry if you place only the concrete in the tensile zone then concrete will be easily subjected to failure okay listen once again so if you take the structures then structures are subjected to two types of tension one is a direct tension or another one is a bending tension so whatever the tension it is concrete cannot resist this tension okay both these tensions cannot be resisted by the concrete so for that purpose in concrete what we have to place we have to place the steel now when you place the steel this steel is strong in tension also okay steel is strong in tension also so if you use this steel and if you use the rcc instead of the pcc it can resist this direct tensile stresses and bending tensile stresses so that's why in the structures where the tensile stresses are expected okay in the structures where the tensile stresses are expected we have to use only rcc but of course in some of the compression members also in purely compression members also we use the steel because the steel is strong in compression also okay so steel is strong in both compression and tension it is not like steel is strong in only tension steel is equally strong in compression also so we can use this steel where there are where we are expecting more tensile stresses or else where we are expecting more compressive stresses okay that's the point then why we have to use only steel in rcc so I told that RCC means reinforcing the cement concrete. Now why we have to use only the steel to reinforcing? So let us see the reasons. First one is if you take the thermal expansion, if you take the coefficient of thermal expansion that we denote with alpha. So alpha of the steel and alpha of the concrete. Okay, alpha of the steel and alpha of the concrete. Both are almost same. So when both are same, what is the advantage is, suppose this is the concrete member and here we are incorporating steel here. So whenever the concrete expands, steel also expands equally. Whenever the concrete contract, steel also contract equally. So that avoids the thermal stresses in the concrete. Okay, so that's the reason we are using the steel. So the first reason why we have to use the steel in RCC is because coefficient of thermal expansion of concrete and steel almost they are same. Then second reason. Okay, so second reason why we have to use is steel makes RCC a ductile material. So if you take the concrete suppose, if you take the concrete, concrete is a ductile material or brittle material? Concrete is a brittle material. So it is subjected to cracking without any um, without any warnings okay so if you use the steel in the rcc then it makes the rcc a ductile material 
so because of that whenever there is a possibility of failure it will give us the prior warning and the next reason why we have to use the steel is because a bond between concrete and steel is very good suppose if the bond is not there even though how good the materials are then they will not resist the loads okay as the bond is good between a concrete and steel stress transfer will take place so that's why rcc rcc act as a good material so bond between concrete and steel is very good so these are the three reasons why we have to use only steel in the rcc what is the first reason alpha of steel and concrete are almost same so we can avoid what we can avoid the thermal stresses second reason is what steel makes the rcc a ductile material and third one is bond between the concrete and steel is very good obviously one more reason is as i told in the previous slides for steel tensile strength is very high so if you use that then it can take care of the tensile stresses so these are the reasons next let us see what are the different materials i mean what are the different materials we are using in the rcc first we have to use the cement you have to use the aggregate we have to use the steel and we have to use the water also so let us see the properties of this materials required in case of the rcc first if you take the size of the aggregate so for this size of the aggregate classes are given in is 456 2000 okay classes are given where is 456 2000 and that class number is 5.3.3 class 5.3.3 and in the page number the page number 14 class are given so the first class here says that that means the class 5.3.3 says that whatever the aggregate is there okay whatever the aggregate used in rcc that should be mostly 20 mm so 20 mm aggregate is mostly suitable for rcc if you you can use a 10 mm aggregate or 40 mm aggregate also but that depends on conditions but which aggregate is more suitable for the rcc is that is the 20 mm coarse aggregate okay then suppose if it is a heavily reinforced member if it is a heavily reinforced member so in this condition whatever the maximum size of the aggregate we use okay in the heavily reinforced members whatever the maximum size of aggregate we use that must be that must be minimum of cover minus 5 mm or else clear distance between bars minus 5 mm so in this two values whatever is minimum okay in this two values whatever is minimum that has to be the maximum size of aggregate so what is the maximum size of aggregate used in the rcc we can say like 20 mm or else cover minus 5 mm or else clear distance minus 5 mm whichever is minimum this is important whichever is minimum okay so whenever i say maximum size and if i give some options you have to choose always the minimum of them okay so that's about the size of the aggregate next one water for concrete so whatever the water we use for that the class was give, the class given was class number 5.4.2 okay class number 5.4.2 page number 14 so this class says that whatever the ph of the water we use okay whatever the ph of the water we use that shall not that shall not be less than 6 okay whatever the ph of the water we use that shall not be less than 6 that means it should be always greater than 6 okay so remember this point here whatever the water we use for the concrete for that ph should not be less than how much 6 very very important point then uh, along with the ph we have to test some parameters here to use the to use the water in the concrete so what are those parameters are first one organic solids and second one inorganic solids okay first one is the organic solids and second one is the inorganic solids now if you take the organic solids it should not exceed 
200 mg per liter okay whatever the organic solids are there it should not exceed 200 mg per liter and whatever the inorganic solids are there it should not exceed 3000 mg per liter okay so whatever the water we use for the concrete in that organic solid should not exceed 200 mg per liter and inorganic solid should not exceed 3 3000 mg per liter similarly if you take the sulfates if you take the sulfates it should not exceed 400 mg per liter okay sulfate should not exceed how much 400 mg per liter okay if you take the chlorides so this chlorides if you are using if you are using the water for pcc they should not exceed 2000 mg per liter and if you are using it for the rcc it should not exceed 500 mg per liter okay so this is about the various parameter we require to use the water in the concrete next one grade of concrete so what do you mean by grade of concrete okay so let us see that so basically what does the grade of the concrete represents is so grade of the concrete represents 28 days characteristic compressive strength 28 days characteristic compressive strength in newton per mm square okay what does the grade of the concrete represents 28 days characteristic compressive strength in newton per mm square okay so if you if you take the concrete and if you make the 15 cm concrete cube specimens and if you determine its compressive strength okay if you determine its 28 days compressive strength then that can be known as that can be referred as what grade of the concrete so now what do you mean by characteristic compressive strength okay what do you mean by characteristic compressive strength and this characteristic compressive strength we denote with fck so let us see what is this fck characteristic compressive strength means the strength below which the strength below which not more than 5% results are expected to fall okay what do you mean by characteristic compressive strength the strength below which not more than 5% results are expected to fall so let us see what is the meaning of this suppose you made a concrete you made a concrete sample okay or else you are working with the concrete in the field then if i say the concrete grade is m30 then for that concrete 95% of the time minimum 95% of the time strength should be greater than 30 newton per mm square maximum maximum 5% of the times it can be below below 30 newton per mm square okay suppose if you take a certain grade of certain sample of concrete and if you say that only 90% of the times for this concrete the strength will be more than 30 newton per mm square and 10% of the times the strength may be less than 30 newton per mm square then characteristic compressive strength or grade of the concrete is not 30 okay in that case it will be less than 30 so if i say characteristic compressive strength then maximum 5% of the times the results can be less than that value okay so that is what a characteristic compressive strength is okay now based on the grade of the concrete it is classified into three types basically they are ordinary concrete standard concrete and high strength concrete okay so there are three grades of concrete sorry there are three types of concrete based on the grades so what are those grades is suppose if you take m10 and m15 okay if you take m10 and m15 that is called as ordinary grade concrete okay then of course m20 also m20 also ordinary grade of concrete then when i say standard grade of concrete it starts from m25 and it ends with m60 and the grades greater than or equal to m65 and the grades greater than or equal to m65 that is called as high strength concrete 
okay so for ordinary concrete what are the grades m10 m15 and m20 for the standard concrete what are the grades m25 and m60 and for high strength concrete what are the grades grades greater than or equal to m65 so now if you ask you a question like what is the minimum grade of high strength concrete how much it is m65 it is then what is the maximum grade of standard grade of concrete that is m60 what is the minimum grade of ordinary grade of concrete m10 what is the maximum grade of ordinary grade of concrete m20 okay so such type of question we can expect in the exam okay and what does this grade of the concrete represents it represents the 28 days characteristic compressive strength and what do you mean by characteristic compressive strength the strength below which not more than 5 percent results are expected to fall so let us see the next one target mean strength and this target mean strength is denoted with fck dash so remember that fck means characteristic compressive strength fck dash means a target mean strength so now the thing is suppose if it is the m30 grade of con concrete let us say okay I, I want the m30 grade of concrete and if i design the mix for the 28 day strength of 30 newton per mm square okay i'm designing the mix for the strength of how much 30 newton per mm square then what is the probability of getting the strength more than 30 newton per mm square is 50 percent okay the probability of getting the strength more than 30 newton per mm square is 50 percent and less than 30 newton per mm square is 50 percent okay so if you get the strength more than 30 newton per mm square it's not a problem but if you get the strength less than 30 newton per mm square it is a problem for you okay so the point is if you design the mix for the given strength of the concrete then probability of reaching that strength is only 50 percent okay just like uh, uh, tossing the coin suppose if you toss the coin probability of getting head is 50 percent getting tail is 50 percent similarly if you design a mix for m30 uh, you, if you design a mix for 30 newton per mm square strength then probability of getting the strength more than 30 newton per mm square is 50 percent and less than 30 newton per mm square is 50 percent but i already i told already i told that characteristic compressive strength means you should have minimum 95 percent of positive result okay when i say characteristic compressive strength you should have minimum 95 percent positive result that's why what we have to do is we have to target for higher strength here that means instead of targeting for 30 newton per mm square you target for a value suppose 40 newton per mm square target for the value of 40 newton per mm square then whether you get the 30 newton per mm square strength easily or not yes if you target for more marks then suppose if you are if you target for 90 marks then 60 marks you can get easily or not yes similarly if you want the strength of 30 you should not target for 30 here you should target for a higher value so that higher value we call as a target mean strength and what is the formula for the target mean strength is fck dash equal to fck plus 1.65 sigma or fck plus x whichever is greater whichever is greater okay so this x value you can get from is 10262 2019 okay x value you can get from which code book is 10262 2019 and whatever this sigma value is there that you can get from is 10262 2019 or else you can get it from is 456 also okay so remember that whatever the target mean strength value is there whatever that fck dash value is there that will be always greater than fck okay so simple point here if you target for a higher value whatever the value you require that you will get easily okay that's the point next one frequency of sampling now the thing is in the field what we have to do is whenever we, we are making the concrete mix we have to take the samples for the testing okay we have to take the samples for the testing and we have to check the strength of them and we have to assure whether we are getting the required strength or not so for that purpose is456 suggesting as a table here this table you can find in page number 29 so now as per this table suppose if you are working with okay if you are working with 1 to 5 meter cube of concrete okay if you are working with 1 to 5 meter cube of concrete then minimum number of samples we have to take is 1 
okay minimum number of samples you have to take is how much one if you are working with 5 to 15 meter cube of concrete then you have to take minimum samples of two if you are working with 15 to 35 meter cube of concrete you have to take minimum three samples if you are working with 35 to 50 meter cube of concrete you have to take minimum four samples okay sorry it is 6 to 15 here 16 to 35 and 36 to 50 now suppose if you are working with greater than 50 meter cube of concrete okay, if you are working with greater than 50 meter cube of concrete then what we have to do is for first 50 meter cube for first 50 meter cube we have to take four sample then for each next 50 meter cube okay for each next 50 meter cube you have to take minimum one sample okay so like this you have to collect the sample and remember that whenever i say sample okay whenever i say sample each sample should contain minimum of three cubes okay each sample should consist of minimum how much three cubes it should consist of okay so now suppose if you are working with some 20 meter cube of concrete in the field then how many samples you have to collect you have to collect three samples suppose if you are working with 45 meter cube of concrete how many samples you have to collect four samples and suppose if you are working with 99 meter cube of concrete then how many samples you have to collect is for first 50 meter cube how many samples it is four samples then how much concrete left here 49 meter cube so this 49 meter cube you have to take one additional sample suppose if you are working with 125 meter cube okay you are working with 125 meter cube then for first 50 meter cube how many samples you have to take four samples next 50 meter cube you have to take only one sample and next 25 meter cube you have to take another sample so totally how many samples you have to take six samples you have to take and remember this point here when i say sample it should minimum consist of how many cubes so sample must consist of totally three cubes so like this we will do the frequency of the sample so once after doing the testing in the field we have to we have to know whether we have to accept the sample and we have to know whether we should not accept the sample so for that purpose the is code is suggesting characteristic compressive strength criteria the is code is is code is suggesting the characteristic compressive strength criteria so now to check this characteristic compressive strength criteria we have to take minimum four samples and remember that when i say sample how many cubes it must consist of it must consist of totally four samples minimum okay suppose you have first sample second sample third sample and fourth sample so for each sample you have three cubes so, so sample one a sample one b sample one c so like this you have three cubes similarly here we have sample 2a 2b 2c and here we have 3a 3b 3c similarly here we have 4a 4b 4c like this so we have to take the samples after taking the samples each sample for each sample you have to determine the compressive strength okay that means if you have three cubes you have to determine the average strength of the three cubes here okay so that will be the strength of the sample Okay, strength of the sample means average strength of the three cubes you have to take. Okay, and after determining that, whatever these four samples results are there, they must be non-overlapping. That means if you take any two sample results, they should not be same. Okay, they should not be same. Then, what's the, uh, uh, then what is the criteria IS code is suggesting is, suppose this is a grid of concrete here and how many test samples results we are checking four samples and whatever those four samples is there they must be non overlapping that means the results should not be same okay so if you if you see the mean of four non overlapping sample result okay mean of non mean of four non overlapping sample result okay so here if it is great if here if the grade of the concrete is greater than or equal to m15 okay if the grade of the concrete is greater than or equal to m15 this then this mean value should not be greater than sorry should not be less than okay whatever this mean value obtained that should not be less than fck plus 0.825 sigma or 
एफ सी के प्लस थ्री न्यूटन पर एम एम स्क्वायर विच एवर इज ग्रेटर ओके यू हैव टू टेक विच वैल्यू ग्रेटर अमॉन्ग दिस टू वैल्यूज सो वट एवर द मीन ऑफ नॉन ओवर फॉर नॉन ओवरलैपिंग सैम्पल रिजल्ट इज देयर दैट शुड नॉट बी लेस देन ग्रेटर ऑफ एफ सी के प्लस पॉइंट एट टू फाइव और एफ सी के प्लस थ्री न्यूटन पर एम एम स्क्वायर सो वट एवर दिस सिग्मा वैल्यू इज देर दैट इज अगेन अपटेन फ्रॉम द आई एस फोर फाइव सिक्स देन इफ यू सी द strength of each sample okay if you see the strength of each sample then it should not be less than fck minus 3 newton per mm square okay if you see the strength of the each sample that should not be less than how much fck minus 3 newton per mm square okay so that is the acceptance criteria to accept any sample here okay so this is about the concrete and in the next video we will see what is the grade of what do you mean by grade of the steel and we will see what are the workability and durability factors we what are the workability and durability factors concrete must satisfy